Top of the morning, everybody. This is BDF44 hitting you up with another video as always. Today, I'd like to talk about the Lakers' uh, new coaching hire, Frank Vogel. Uh, I'm a happy Laker fan as it pertains to this hire. I really, really like this hire because I was a Frank Vogel um, guy from the, from the beginning. I remember when he got the Orlando job and I thought that was a good idea for Orlando to hire him because I loved what he had done in Indiana. Then Orlando went on their process of tanking. I don't think they really wanted to do too much other than uh, gain draft picks and kind of develop young talent through Vogel. And he was only there for about two years. Wasn't a whole lot of winning going on. And I don't think they had any intention of doing any winning. So that kind of messed up his resume. But if you isolate his Indiana tenure, that was 10 years in two conference finals, defensive minded. They were top of the Eastern Conference uh, several times, if I'm not mistaken. They were a prominent team. And at one point, they were considered the best team in the league. Uh, of course, LeBron James was going to take that from them, and nobody was confused about that. We all knew LeBron was coming. But during the regular season, they were rocking stuff like my Milwaukee has been doing this year and like Toronto's been doing this year. So I felt like Frank Vogel was probably the best candidate of the coaches mentioned in my book. I liked him better than Monty Williams. I liked him better than um, uh, Ty Lue. And the thing about Ty Lue was... <laughs> As long as LeBron is here, I kind of agreed with, with the Lakers' mindset on this one. As long as he's here, you want him focused on LeBron James and, and recapturing the chemistry that they had in Cleveland. As far as him developing the young talent, I don't see anything in his resume that shows he's the guy that you go for in that regard. You know, I, I don't see anything in his resume that says developer of young players. And the Lakers have drawn a line in the sand at this point, and they've basically let everyone know that their intention is to continue cultivating the career of Lonzo Ball, which for me as a fan thrills me. I couldn't be happier. So uh, I know a lot of people don't like Lonzo's game. I know he has some deficiencies that are glaring and uh, that's cool. But when you bring guys like Rondo, Le LeBron, now Jason Kidd, um, Magic Johnson, these are people that he's all going to be, he's going to be able to call and, and text and and, and, and pick their brains for the rest of his career. These are great people for him to know this early. And I'm pretty sure that if people like Ben Simmons and some of these other point guards around the league had those guys in their Rolodex, they would be that much better players. So I think the Lakers are doing a great job of making sure that he has what he needs. Um, so as far as Vogel's concerned, I love the idea of bringing in Kid as well because Vogel tends to have offensive issues with his teams. Defensively, they're sound, but offensively, they tend to play with a lot of, uh, you know, half court basketball, slow pace, stuff like that. And I think that's going to be a little bit of a conflict for players like Lonzo Ball. So I'm hoping that Jason Kidd can help implement some uh, some strategies that help us keep our pace and help us continue to, you know, try to strive to to put points on the board because we never had issues putting points on the board. I'm hoping that Vogel's tenure doesn't bring about some bad offensive habits while we're developing good defensive habits. So. Um, all in all, I wouldn't say that Vogel's the perfect candidate, but he was my favorite of the candidates mentioned. Um, I like Mark Jackson, of course, but uh, it, it, it appears he's being blackballed. I think it's safe to say that he's not getting any calls anytime soon, and I don't think it has anything to do with what he's capable of uh, as a coach. But I don't know what that's about, and I don't feel like speculating on it right now. Uh, what I do want to say is, all in all, if I'm to judge Kurt Rambis uh, Linda Rambis's tenure uh, in place, I would say they're actually doing an okay job, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> the Ty Lue situation rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Not me. I'll tell you why. I like Frank Vogel at this contract better than I like Ty Lue with the five-year deal, man. Ty Lue with a five-year deal means we have him on, on tab to make a certain amount of money past LeBron's tenure, and we know for a fact that we don't believe that he's the guy to coach the team after LeBron leaves. So you don't, sorry about that, you do not give him a deal that extends past LeBron's career uh, with, with the team. You don't do that. You, you, you only bring him in for the duration of LeBron's time here. Now, I don't blame Ty Lue for being insulted by that either. I do not. Uh, I think he did the right thing for himself. If you know you're being put in a position to just basically wait to be fired, he could find a better job for himself. So from Ty Lue's perspective, I don't blame you, bro. You did the right thing for yourself. 
Stand your ground and make sure you let them know who you are so you have an opportunity to prove that rather than find yourself being typecast like an actor. So it was the right move for Ty Lue. It was the right move for the Lakers. I think everybody's handling things uh, fairly well in terms of this situation. Uh, the fans and, and, and the media are, are saying what they're saying. But I challenge people who say the Lakers only uh, had no intention of hiring Ty Lue. I challenge them with this. Why am I going to go out of my way to do a song and dance to to bring a guy in, have a birthday cake with his name on it uh, right before all of this stuff is supposed to go down with the negotiations, only to turn around and say, you know what, I had never had any intention of hiring this dude. I was just, you know, playing games. Uh, we don't want him because LeBron James is, is, is going to have too much power if he comes through. That doesn't make any sense. If I have that in mind, I'm not inviting this guy over here to, to, to have conversations about the job. Doesn't make any sense at all. That's a waste of time. That's an unnecessary step. I don't believe they're taking unnecessary steps. I think they had every intention of giving Ty Lue the job. And I think, as reported, negotiations fell apart. That's what I think. So I, I don't, you know, I don't have any 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 thought any bad thoughts about, about the hiring of Frank Vogel. I'm happy. Um I think it's a good decision. I like that they didn't give Ty Lue the five years. I like the fact that we aren't going all in for Monty Williams because though I like Monty Williams, um, his character and what he's been through, uh, I look at his resume and it ain't better than Frank Vogel's. It's just not. Um, and and I look at his tenure with New Orleans, did nothing for me. So I'm just looking at him and saying, maybe he was in a situation like Vogel in Orlando where everybody was tanking and stuff. But to be honest with you, I just trust the guy who's done it. I trust the guy who's done it. And look at it like this. The only person who was able to really knock Vogel off while he was with the Pacers was LeBron. And guess who we have on our team right now? Yeah, LeBron. The only guy who was able to knock him off when his team was really good. So for those who were saying LeBron James ain't going to appreciate this hire, if I'm the only guy who's figured out my coach, I kind of like that. <laughs> so that's just me. But uh, anyway, y'all, I'll end it there. Hope everyone's having a great start to their week. Uh, say a prayer for me. Got some things going on in my life that I'm trying to straighten out, but I'm still going to keep coming at you guys with these videos. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Signing out. BDF.